After Valentino Rossi took 11 victories on the Honda RC211V in 2002, Honda evened up the field a little by handing out the championship winning machine to a few other riders. Max Biaggi, MotoGP rookies Nicky Hayden and Makoto Tamada, and Seti Gibernau, now in his eighth season in the Premier class with just one Grand Prix victory to his name. After a difficult 2002 season with the Suzuki four-stroke, Gibernau and his Telefonica movie star sponsors made the dream move to a Honda with Fausto Grassini's team. His first race on the RC211V was the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, home track of his new teammate, Daijiro Kato, the 2002 250cc world champion and Japan's great hope for MotoGP success. Strange place, Suzuka. It's one of those tracks where you do expect something bad, but it is such a beautiful and challenging and fascinating and superb racetrack. Kato was such a special guy. Such big things were expected of him. He was so important to Honda, who also owned Suzuka, of course. On the third lap of the race, Kato's bike slammed into the barrier at the chicane. The 26-year-old died from his injuries two weeks later. It was a very surprising sort of accident. They had a commission of inquiry which came to some conclusions that basically it was rider error, which was probably correct. The great irony being that the accident happened at a place nobody expected. The corner that was always been regarded as the worst was the one where Alex Barros hurt his knee and where Melandri broke his ankle. The fastest corner on the track. Out of the hairpin, the long right, I've known for years. You can't crash there because if you do, you're going to the hospital. You know, we're concert crash, it was just a freak deal. I mean, I don't know, we could go back there a hundred times and nobody would ever crash there. Just one of those weird deals. Our world is like a big family. You know everybody, you are friends with everybody. We have big fighting in the track, but outside, everybody's friend, you know? This is very bad for all motorcycles, you know? But anyway, we know our sport. We have uh, the small part is dangerous, because when you go 330 km per hour, we know it's dangerous. We know it's not all uh, flowers and roses, and it's, it's a risk you take, and it's a um, calculated risk. And when you do the calculations, well, the odds are in your favor. Always everybody say the sport continues, but when you have some moment like this, it's difficult, very really difficult. It's some feelings that uh, you don't expect from racing or you don't really expect from life. To me it was the hardest race in my life for sure and one of the toughest moments in my life. We had a meeting with the team and at the end of the day we, we realized that, that we had to do it. Either we, I stopped racing or I went there but it could not be nothing in between. Well, emotional to say, you know, an inadequate word to describe what that was like. But try and put yourself in Sete's position, look what he was feeling like. And he had to win. And on that race hinged perhaps Sete's career. And my theory is that Sete found something deep inside that even he didn't know he had. He'll tell you he always believed in himself. But that, the whole Cato thing put him under such severe stress. And he had to win. And he did.